Hey guys, this is Kathy, and this is my channel, Chronic Kathy. And I have been wanting to start a YouTube channel about living with chronic illness for a long, long time, probably a couple years. And I actually got the idea from one of my doctors who I don't go to anymore, but she saw that I was dealing really bad with anxiety and things about being sick. And um, she gave me the idea, why don't you channel some positive energy into a YouTube channel and maybe you can help other people. So I've really been thinking about it for a long time and I've you know, even made lists of ideas and things I wanted to talk about. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna start doing it. Um, it's kind of hard to talk about. It's not something I like to dwell on or talk about too much, but there are so many people with chronic illness that, I don't know, maybe talking, you know, watching what I talk about or um, hearing my story or things like that, you know, I don't know, maybe it could help somebody, I don't know. But I just want to tell you a little bit about um, my story. But first I want to say that I'm not a doctor or a clinician of any kind, a nurse or anything. So please talk to your doctor about any um, medical questions you have. This is not a medical channel or anything to be taken as medical advice. So I need to make that clear. Um, I'm going to tell you briefly my story. I don't want to get too into it because it's a really long story. So I'm going to try to give you the very condensed version. Um, I was always healthy my whole life, never had any health problems. I had corrective eye surgery when I was four. I was just cross-eyed. I had my tonsils out when I was two. Other than that, I had never been in an emergency room, never been in a hospital, um, nothing like that. No, no problems, nothing. And um, when I went to college, I went to Florida State and um, they built a brand new gym when I was there back in like 92. And I used to go to the gym with my roommates all the time. I had a roommate that was a real health nut and I was not big into health or anything. I was, you know, I wasn't heavy or anything. I was in shape, but I just wasn't into working out. But she was really into the gym. So she used to get me up every morning at six o'clock to go to the gym with her. And I started to really like it. And I was really in good shape. And this went on for a while. Um, but I started to notice um, that I would get shorter breath kind of just start happening. I would get a little lightheaded, dizzy, and there were a couple of times I actually had to stop working out and kind of sit down, which I thought was really weird. I was like 22 years old and I'm just like, what's going on? So I thought maybe it's asthma. I never had asthma before. Maybe um, I just kind of, I don't know. I didn't know what was going on. I just kind of blew it off. I was like, whatever. So I stopped going to the gym though, because I thought, well, that'll solve that problem. I just won't work out. Um, then I just kind of went about my life as usual. And over the years, my symptoms were getting slowly worse. Um, I started getting really out of breath, just climbing stairs, like huffing and puffing. My heart would be pounding out of my chest. Um, one time I climbed three flights of stairs to my friend's apartment and I passed out when I got there. I had never fainted in my life and it was really weird. And then I went to um, Italy my last semester. I studied in Italy and there were stairs everywhere because I studied in Florence. And um, every time I climbed stairs, I was so out of breath. Like I was huffing and puffing like, you know, it was my chest would get tight. I just didn't know what was going on. I was, by that time I was 23 years old. And I'm just like, this is just crazy. I had no health problems anyway. So this went on for a while. I came home, I graduated, I came home and I told my mom who's a nurse and she took me to a cardiologist. And I was thinking well, maybe something's wrong with my heart or something. And he um, put a halter monitor on me and he basically was like, you're just having panic attacks. That's what he told me. And I did have some anxiety issues. So that made sense to me. I said, okay, he said, when you have a panic attack, it feels like you're having a heart attack and this and that. And you know, you can have exercise induced anxiety, whatever, all this craziness. But I was young and I said, okay. Um, so I just continued with my life and I was getting sicker. I was getting worse. So I went to another doctor and he told me to go see a psychiatrist. He also said I had anxiety. So I went to a psychiatrist and and a therapist. I even went through a 15 week 
anxiety program that my mom paid $1,500 for. I went every week um, to deal with my anxiety that I was having. I was having anxiety because I couldn't breathe, but that was not causing, that was not why I was having anxiety. So anyway, I went to a psychiatrist. He put me on like three different anxiety medications. I was on Clonopin, Buspar, and Xanax at the same time, I think. It was crazy. And I was still having problems. I wasn't anxious anymore. That's for sure. But I was still huffing and puffing. I, I couldn't even walk to the mailbox without getting out of breath. But I just thought that my anxiety was just, I just thought it was anxiety. That's just what everybody told me. So somehow I met my husband and we got married. Um, you know, we we met and got married six weeks later. I know it's crazy. We eloped, but we've been married 23 years. So something happened that was right. But somehow he just fell in love with me and we got married. So um, things were manageable. I was still having issues, but I ignored it. I tried to work um, and I just avoided certain activities that would get me out of breath. So, you know, I thought everything will be okay. I'll just have anxiety. I'll have to deal with it. And then, this is taking longer than I thought. I'm really sorry. Um, two months after we got married, I was so sick. It just kind of snowballed. I literally could not sit up in bed without fainting. And I thought I had a really bad flu. I mean, I look back and I'm like, God, you know, how could I be so naive? But I really didn't think there was anything seriously wrong with me. I kept being told it was just panic attacks and this and that. But I sat up in bed one night and I fainted. And I just told Brian, I said, I, I'm not doing good, something's wrong. I thought I had a bad flu. So he took me to the emergency room. And um, I'd never been to the ER in my life. So I went there, my parents came and I was so tired, I, I could not move. I could, I just was laying there like so tired. Everybody was running around me and I'm like, whatever. I was exhausted and I'd been tired for years on and off, but it was really bad now. And they put a pulse ox on my finger and they immediately put me on oxygen, which I'd never been on before. And the nurse was standing there, standing there, watching my oxygen, watching my oxygen. She says, oh good, it's your oxygen is going up. And I'm like, going up, what do you mean? And I said, well, what is it? She said, when you came in, it was 52. I said, 52? She said, your oxygen was 52%. I couldn't believe her. And my mom kind of looked at me and said, yeah, because my mom was there and she, I guess, didn't want to scare me. So I'm like, great. So they put me on oxygen and I started to feel better a little bit. Um, they did labs and my hemoglobin, which should be under 14, was 22 which basically means that my red blood cells were multiplying to provide oxygen. So my blood pressure was super high. They had to get that down. So I was like, okay, something's seriously wrong, obviously. This is not anxiety. There's something wrong with me. And I really, for a long time, thought I was going crazy because I would tell people something is wrong with me. Something is wrong. And everybody just blew it off. Everybody friends, family, they were all like, oh, you're just a stress. It's stress. That's it. There's nothing wrong with you. And um, so I believed them, but I knew deep down, deep, deep down, I knew something was wrong. And I would just tell Brian, I'm like, there is something wrong. I just don't know what it is, but I know there's something wrong. And there's been something wrong for a long time. So anyway, they, um, I was critical. So they stabilized me um, and they put me in ICU. I was 27 years old, 26 by now, having symptoms for four years. So they put me in ICU and the cardiologist came in and I was there about three days. And everybody in ICU was over 90 years old. I was 26, it was really weird. And I just was kind of very matter of fact. And I said, well, they'll figure out what's wrong. I wasn't scared at all. I was so tired. I was relieved that I was getting help. And I was relieved that people were actually like listening to me and being like, there is something wrong with this girl, we gotta help her. And my husband, you know, we didn't know each other very long before we got married. It was just kind of a whirlwind thing. So he really just didn't know what to make of all this. 
And um, I actually told him in the ICU that if he wanted to be able to get a divorce, I would give it to him. And he said, no, no, I'm not, I'm not leaving you. And he said, I'm, I'm not going anywhere, Kathy. I married you, I love you, and, and I'm gonna stay by you. And um, they transferred me to Jackson Memorial in Miami and into the cardiac care unit. And I still don't know what was wrong, but I was stable, they stabilized me. And they did all these tests. They did every test you can imagine. And that was like a teaching hospital. So there were like 50 doctors coming in all the time to see me. So they did all these tests. They stabilized me. I still don't know what was going on. They threw around lupus, other ideas. And I said, well, something's happening. You know, I figured they'll figure it out. They sent me home and the doctor said, come back in a week and we'll have everything back. So I said, fine. I was stable. I was feeling better. So I went back after a week and I went in with my husband, my parents were there and um, I sat down and he pulled out a piece of paper and he started to do this little drawing of the heart and the lungs and all this business. And he said, you have pulmonary hypertension. And I said, well, what's that? And he said, it's a very rare disease. It affects one out of a million people. And they had done a cardiac cath. That's how they knew. They did a cardiac cath test, so they were able to measure my lung pressure. And he drew a little drawing explaining the whole little thing, how it is. And it's basically your pulmonary artery clogs for some reason, and the heart can't get the blood through. So your heart gets backed up. And when I was in ICU, my heart, they did an x-ray, was so big, it was touching my rib cage because it's a muscle. It grows, it grows, it grows. And over the years, it had grown so big, it was actually touching my ribs. And I had a hole in my heart too. So he explained this whole thing to me and I said, okay. I was so relieved to have a diagnosis. Like I couldn't even tell you, I was so relieved to know what was going on at this point. And then he said to me, and then he looked at my husband who I had known totally four months at this point. And he said, who was 25 years old at the time. And, um, he said, oh, he was about 26, I think, and I was 27. I can't remember, 20, no, I was 26, he was still 25. And he looked at my husband and he said, um, you need to make her funeral arrangements. <laughs> and my husband's like, excuse me? And he said, she's got about six months left. And that was it. It was very matter of fact, it was very cruel. And it was extremely shocking. And I just completely started crying. I had been totally calm the whole time. I'd been through ICU. I was in the cardiac care unit. I had a cardiac cath. I had a TEE. I had echoes, x-rays. I had every test you could do to a person. And I was totally calm, never lost it. And then he's like, you have six months left. I totally started crying. So he called my parents in and I'm not gonna say that doctor's name, but he was a complete a-hole the way he handled it. He almost seemed happy to tell me this news. Not once did he say to me, um, let's try to help you. Let me do some research. Let's try to figure this out. I, I don't want you to die. Nothing. It was just very cold. And he said, there's nothing that can be done. So my parents came in, I was hysterical and my mom and dad were there. And uh, my mom had never heard of this disease before and she's a nurse. And then we left and I remember we were in the hallway and my dad uh, had tears in his eyes and my dad never cries. And he hugged me and he looked at me and he said, this is not acceptable, Kathy. He said, I'm not accepting this. And he said, there's gotta be something we can do for you. He said, I'm not just gonna go home and bury my daughter. So he called my uncle back then, this was in 97. I didn't have a computer. We didn't really have computers. The internet was pretty new. So he called my uncle, his brother, and he said what was going on. And he told my uncle, see what you can find online. So we went back home and my dad said, we'll figure something out. There's gotta be something, Kathy. He said, there's gotta be something. You're just, this is not right. So my uncle called later that day and found this national organization for people with pulmonary hypertension. And it's called PHA now. Back then it was called UPAPH. So he gave me their number and I called them and they said there is a treatment. It just got approved last year in 96, but only certain hospitals do it. So we found out the hospitals that do it. Fast forward, 
I got all my medical records and three months later I flew to California and had this medicine administered and it's um I have a catheter if you can see it I have a catheter in my chest um so they put a catheter in that's the only way you can get this medication is through a catheter that goes into your heart and I still have a catheter that goes to my heart it's not the same catheter I've had like eight of them but that's how it is and I was so happy to find out that I wasn't going to die because we called this organization and they calmed me down and they said, this medicine's brand new. It just got approved and it works. And they also said, if it doesn't work, you can get a lung transplant, which is not the greatest option, but at least I had options. And I was so mad. I said, why didn't that doctor tell me this? I found out years later through the doctor I see now in Miami at a different hospital that at the time they were doing this treatment in Miami. They were doing it. He didn't know, he didn't tell me, so I had to fly to Los Angeles to get it done. Anyway, that's my story. So I went on the drug and I went home and I um, felt better, but it really took me about a year to start feeling really better because I was just so tired all the time. I was in bed probably 16 hours a day I was just exhausted and the nurses told me you're on this new drug it makes you tired your body's recovering and it was I had a hole in my heart my heart was huge and she said this will repair all of that but you got to give it time and I did I started to feel good after about a year and a half not great but better um, they put me on oxygen which I'm still on to this day um, but I was stable which is the most important thing and here I am, I'll be 50 years old next year, 50 years old. And I was diagnosed when I was 27 and given six months to live. So anyway, that's my story. It took me 15 minutes, I'm a little more to tell you. I'm really sorry, I thought I could do it in five minutes. But what I wanted to do was um, do a channel, not about um, just pulmonary hypertension, but that and just living with chronic illness. I have lived with chronic illness for more than half of my life. And I don't consider just being sick from when I was diagnosed. I consider being sick from when I started having symptoms, which was 22 years old, and now I'm 49. So 27 years I've been dealing with this. And living with chronic illness is very difficult and, um, Nobody told me how hard it was going to be because I guess nobody would really know unless they've been through it themselves. And I'm very grateful to be alive. Don't get me wrong. I have a beautiful family and I have an amazing husband and a great daughter and my parents are incredible. Um, and I'm very grateful. I really am. But living with chronic illness is so difficult. People who don't live with it don't realize how hard it is. Um, so I'm hoping on this channel I can connect with people and reach out to people and maybe help people who do live with chronic illness feel not so alone because it is very isolating and maybe help people who don't have chronic illness but have loved ones who do understand what it's like a little bit. So thanks so much for watching. This is my first vlog on Chronic Kathy and I hope you like and subscribe. I will be trying to do a video every week on different topics. Um, so just leave comments and thanks so much. 27 years I've been dealing with this and living with chronic illness is very difficult. And um, nobody told me how hard it was gonna be because I guess nobody would really know unless they've been through it themselves. And I'm very grateful to be alive, don't get me wrong. I have a beautiful family and I have an amazing husband and a great daughter and my parents are incredible. Um, and I'm very grateful, I really am. But living with chronic illness is so difficult. People who don't live with it don't realize how hard it is. Um, so I'm hoping on this channel I can connect with people and reach out to people and maybe help people who do live with chronic illness feel not so alone because it is very isolating and maybe help people who don't have chronic illness but have loved ones who do understand what it's like a little bit. So thanks so much for watching. This is my first vlog on Chronic Kathy. 
and I hope you like and subscribe. I will be trying to do a video every week on different topics. Um, so just leave comments and thanks so much.